A California judge just ordered porn star and director Stormy Daniels to pay nearly $300,000 in legal fees to the lawyers representing President Trump. This comes from the defamation suit brought by Daniels, not the primary lawsuit involving her non-disclosure agreement concerning her alleged affair with Mr. Trump. Daniels' lawyer, Michael Avenatti, argued today that the amount awarded was less than half what Trump's team asked for. Trump's attorney called the ruling today a total victory for the president. And, of course, this is coming after President Trump was implicated by federal prosecutors in crimes committed by his former attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen, relating to those hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and Playboy Playmate of the Year, Karen McDougal. Yet the response from Republicans on Capitol Hill has been rather muted. Mm. Let's discuss. I want to start with something striking mm. um, from Senator Orrin Hatch. And just to remind people, Senator Orrin Hatch from Utah, uh, when he voted in uh, 1999 to convict then-President Bill Clinton in the Senate impeachment trial, he said in a statement back then, quote, this great nation cannot, uh, this great this great nation can tolerate a president who makes mistakes, but it cannot tolerate one who makes a mistake, then breaks the law to cover it up. Now, compare that with what Senator Hatch, now the most senior Republican senator, had to say about President Trump being implicated in felonies by allegedly directing Michael Cohen to make these hush money payments. Take a listen. The Democrats will do anything to hurt this president. Anything. But this is not the Democrats. This is the Southern District of New York. The U.S. Attorney. I mean, that's what's making this allegation. Okay, but uh, I, I don't care. All I can say is he's doing a good job as president. I don't think he was involved in crimes, but he, even then, you know, uh, you can make anything a crime under the current laws. Amanda Carpenter, as a conservative who has stayed consistent throughout the Trump era, what do you make of that? It's just funny to watch everyone say it doesn't matter because I think you have to go back and remember what it was like in June and October of 2016. June is when Kira McDougal, the, the playmate, wanted to make her story public. That was before the Republican convention. And they stuffed that story and acted in an illegal way to do so. Anybody that questions that, go read the filing by the Southern District of New York. That should have been part of the conversation if that woman wanted to make it public before the Republican convention. And then you fast forward to October. The Access Hollywood tapes became public on October 7th. The day after, Story Daniels started making overtures to say, I want to tell my story. They stuffed that in an illegal manner. And so had we those two pieces of information, you have to ask yourself, would the election have changed? October, there was a lot of focus on Donald Trump's treatment of women. Can you imagine what it had been like the day after the Access Hollywood tapes came out, Stormy Daniels came out and started talking about her time in the hotel with Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. I think that's worth a couple thousand votes in states like Michigan and Wisconsin. Yeah. Look, I, I honestly think that seeing Senator Orrin Hatch say what he did contradict himself um, is the reason why so many people are disillusioned with the current state of politics. Repu many Republicans in Congress and otherwise have sold their souls for a brazen pursuit of power. And the American people told you in the midterm elections, and I believe they will hopefully say it again in 2020, um, that this is not what they want. This is not the type of America we want to have. We want elected officials who are willing to stand up to the president, not go along with the get along because it benefits you. And that's what Orrin Hatch and so He's many other Republicans have done. He doesn't care. He's on his way out, but there are yeah. so many other people still sitting there, still coddling and backing up the president um, in private while, uh, and, and while publicly maybe wagging their finger just a little bit, but they still vote for his policies. They are still supporting the Republican agenda. This is a disgrace. I heard uh, Jonah Goldberg, the conservative uh, writer for the National Review the other day talking about on NPR, talking about how there used to be a time when Republicans looked at the moral issue, forget the legality of it all, forget whether or not the, this payment was acceptable or this, this payment was not acceptable under the law, the morality of it, the idea that the president, shortly after his wife gave birth to their son, was uh, having these affairs with uh, whomever, it doesn't matter, but in this case, Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, allegedly. Yeah, and breaking the law, to, according to the Southern District of New York, uh, I mean, it's also unbelievable. I still, I'm still reeling from the Dave Fossey thing, who was, we were discussing in the break, was fired at Newt Gingrich's insistent, insistence from the Hill 20 years ago when he worked for Dan Burton because he was such an out-of-control sort of character, and then went into sort of various sleazy direct mail things and so forth for 15 years, uh, then was a big Trump guy because why not, you know, birds of a feather and all that. And the idea that he could be chief of staff is so jaw-dropping that for me it almost swamps everything else. But I also agree the Orrin Hatch... I mean, that's pathetic. I mean, really, this is, it, it's just pathetic. I, I have to say what's interesting is you have a portion of his statement 
um, from 1999 dealing with President Clinton. And I was reading earlier, there's this other piece. I know none of us enjoy sitting in judgment of the president, our fellow human being, but that is our job and we cannot ignore our responsibility. I believe most of us will do a sincere job of trying to fulfill our oath to do impartial justice. Mm -hmm. And I just would ask him what happened to impartial justice and at what point did that become partisan, especially when you should be at your most courageous on your way out. And he's actually going in the exact opposite direction, talking about the success of the economy, when he also raised the success of the economy in his 1999 statement, saying that that's not good enough. You still have to be a moral human being. I mean, what's amazing, Angela, if I just say, is, is, yeah. no one's asking him right now to vote for impeachment or anything like that. Right. No one's asking him to support it's it. All you're asking him to say is, all you're asking him to say is, the Southern District of New York has made these, 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 these charges or has made these statements. Let's see how the legal system plays out. Meanwhile, let's let the legal system play out. Yeah. That's all we need. We on, don't need rationalizations and defenses of this guy ahead of time. Just on the morality front, yes, there's infidelity. Yes, there's a campaign finance violations. But when you read that filing, the extreme amount of deception just comes seeping through. And that just wasn't from Michael Cohen, it was at the direction of Donald Trump. It wasn't that they just made an illegal campaign finance violation, they set up shell companies, they did bank loans. I mean, yeah. they hid this and stuffed this in a way that should disqualify anyone from public office. Can, can we just be frank, though, and say, I really do not believe the, that the Republican Party truly ever really cared about morality and higher moral ground. I think that was really? a, no. a no. no. I think that was a, I, I think do. that was a message that they were <laughs> allowed, I mean, I think that we they, to, I think that we they successfully co I right who do, I, I, honestly. I don't know. I think Bill Crystal feels that way. I think Amanda Carpenter. But I think Mitt Romney that, feels this way. I think that, John to McCain say that you, feels to, felt I, this I'm way. I'm saying that to say, I think the, the, something that the right has always done very well um, is messaging. And I think the right very successfully right. messaged themselves as the party of higher moral ground. As, as to say that Democrats, we don't love the we Lord in some respects and we don't Trump. care about morals and so on and so forth. And now you have Donald Trump, who at every turn has acted in a total affront to what is supposed to be a cornerstone of the Republican Party. I'm going to say, I do think part American of it, everyone politics. knows more is coming, so they don't want to go out on a limb on this.